welcome back to Reviews from Hell. So it, it's been a while. I think it's been... I don't think I've done a Reviews from Hell episode since either The Last of Us ended or Scream 6 came out. So very early this year, I think, was the last time I hosted this show. So I'm very excited to be hosting it again for a movie that I've been very excited for. So I have the, the cup here. My theater didn't get the Billy the Puppet like popcorn bucket, which sucked because I want it so bad. So instead we have this cup here with the English and French titles. And it comes with this little Billy standee. And he's not going to focus. I'll put him here. But you just press this little button and he falls over. And then he stands back up and he falls over and he stands back up. It's thrilling. We had to buy two because we played too roughly with the first one. And it literally combusted in the theater. So anyways, besides talking about my theater experience seeing the movie, which was great. We had the perfect seats for the movie. Our friends were in front of us. So they got to hear us cheer when Billy the Puppet showed up. They heard us groan audibly when Hoffman showed up in the post credit scene. Just as a warning, there are major spoilers ahead for Saw X. So if you haven't seen the movie, go see it and then watch this. Um, but just proceed with caution in general. Also, I don't know if you've noticed, but I've, I've zhuzhed up my lighting a little bit so I could be uh, saw green. So first off, let's just talk about my thoughts about the movie generally, and then we will get into the synopsis and the plot points. I didn't get to take a notebook in and sort of take play-by-play -play notes while it was happening. Just where it was the first time I saw it, I just wanted to be able to take it in fully for myself and not be trying to write my review as I'm watching it. And then usually on the drive home from movies, me and my boyfriend will have like the most prolific philosophical discussions about the movie and we bring up so many good points. So I told myself on the drive home, I would record it on my phone and then I completely forgot and we literally had an amazing conversation about like the philosophies of Saw and like the rules and stuff. So it is devastating that no one except us got to hear that. So to start off overall, I really enjoyed this movie. I enjoyed it. It's the first time I've gotten to see a Saw movie in theaters. I am a fairly new fan to the franchise. I watched the original Saw for the first time last Halloween in 2022. And then I watched the whole franchise over the past couple months in the summer and stuff. But before I had watched all the movies, I had seen all of Dead Meat's Kill Count videos on them. So I sort of knew what I was getting myself into when I was watching them. I knew what was going to happen and stuff. So this movie was the first time I got to see a Saw movie and not know what happened. Because all the other ones, I had seen the kill counts before the movies. So I sort of knew what was going to happen. But this was the first time I had no idea what was going to happen. And it was really cool and luckily I was so busy like the day I saw it I had absolutely no time to be on social media on reddit or on twitter to be spoiled so it like it worked out really well in the long run that I had a super busy day on Thursday so yes it was good however I feel like it does like any movie have its faults and stuff and there was definitely stuff in the movie that I wasn't a huge fan of, um, specifically Hoffman in the end credits, because I hate him. And then even the, the twist at the end with Cecilia knowing who Jigsaw is and stuff, I wasn't really huge on that, but I feel like the positives really outweighed the negatives in this movie. And then obviously it's such, it brings back like, the, the grit and the grossness of the original Saw movies. Like, the traps are dirty looking and rusty and the lights are, like, green and, like, blues and stuff. It just, it made me happy that it looked like a Saw movie, albeit, obviously, a Saw movie with a much higher budget and production value than the original ones. But yeah, overall, I think it's a good entry to the franchise. They definitely left the door open for a sequel in between 2 and 3, or even another sequel after Saw X. I don't know, we'll just have to see what the next few years brings for the Saw franchise. So I think now we should maybe do a little play-by-play -play of the synopsis on Wikipedia, and I will share my thoughts on the movie as we go through it. 
right off the bat, this is one of the first Saw movies that doesn't open with a trap right away, which I think is a really cool thing to do. It's also showing maybe how the franchise is changing and evolving maybe, and they're less sort of looking to follow like a formula in a sense with these, with hopefully these new movies. I feel like there's probably going to be some more. So yeah, to start off, it's John in an MRI machine, and he's told that due to his ev- due to his advanced brain cancer, he only has months to live. He attends a cancer support meeting where he meets Henry Kessler, who claims to have gotten a terminal diagnosis. A physically destitute John later encounters a seemingly healthy Henry, who claims to have been cured by an experimental Norwegian cancer treatment conducted by a group led by Dr. Peterson. A desperate John contacts the doctor's daughter, Cecilia Peterson, who refers him to her clinic in Mexico City. Now, I might need my memory jogged, but I feel like in Saw 6, when they have the flashbacks of John at the health insurance place, is it, is it Norway? Because, no, it definitely is. It definitely is. And then I think they did a good job sort of following that, but then also being able to do it in Mexico by saying, like, the clinic had been raided and they had to move. I think that ended up working really well and stuff in terms of, like, changing the location from what you know in Saw 6. It looks like they kept the website the same, which is really cool. At least I think they show a website in Saw 6. I don't know. It's been a while since I watched, like, 4, 5, 6, 7. I don't- I've only seen them from start to finish once, so obviously I'm not gonna have the best recollection of them, but I mean, I also am reviewing this and ultimately the franchise as a whole by extension because there's so many flashbacks, so maybe I should have brushed up on my Sussex knowledge before starting. But anyways, continuing, you know, John goes to Mexico, he's driven to the clinic by a taxi driver named Diego, and he meets Cecilia and her team, who are Mateo, Valentina, and Dr. Cortez, as well as a young woman named Gabriella, who claims to have been cured by Cecilia, and then another patient named Parker Sears, who just underwent surgery. This was the first time my name was used in a horror movie. So it was very surreal to hear, like, John Kramer and, and, like, Billy the Puppet and stuff be like, Gabriella. It's like, what? What do you want? Like, it's just me. What do you want? I haven't done anything. I haven't done anything to put myself in a trap. So that that was that was fun to hear. John also meets Carlos, who is a young boy that lives nearby to the clinic, and the wheel on his bike is broken. And so John, being like an engineer and stuff, helps him fix it and sort of shows, tells him to like pull on it. So we have established that John knows how to say pull in Spanish. Then by extension, I guess, Carlos knows how to say pull in English, maybe? So that that's established that John knows how to say pull in Spanish. Remember that, you're gonna need to know that later. So anyway, John, it's a really nice scene actually. John is not the character you wanna see interacting with children, but knowing that like he wanted to be a father and stuff, it is nice to see him interact with children that aren't being held at gunpoint in traps and stuff, like with Gordon's daughter and Daniel and Saw 2 and What's her name in Saw 3? It starts with a C. Corbett. Corbett in Saw 3. So cool to see him interacting with a kid that's not like on their deathbed. Or like in their death trap or whatever. Anyways, so John like gets ready and goes under surgery and he wakes up and Cecilia's like, you're cancer free, like enjoy the rest of your life. He buys a gift for Gabriella. He gets her a bottle of tequila that they share earlier in the movie. And then when he goes to the clinic to give it to her because she's not at the house he's staying at, it's abandoned, it's like torn apart. And then while looking around, he sees like the the TV or mirror that he could remember seeing when he was having the surgery done of them like digging around in the brain. And he finds a DVD that's like brain surgery for beginners or something that shows video footage of brain surgery. And that's what they had playing on that monitor. That's what he saw when he was, like, under the anesthesia. And then he takes the bandage off his head and there's no marks at all. So he was scammed. They didn't perform the surgery. He's still got cancer. So then he figures out that Dr. Cortez, who was the one that performed the surgery, 
was Diego in disguise, who was the taxi driver from earlier in the movie. John kidnaps him and places him in a trap where he must remove explosive wires to his arms by cutting through his flesh. Diego survives the trap and gives up the information of everyone involved in the scam. Jigsaw's apprentice Amanda Young then kidnaps Cecilia and her team. The four wake up in the clinic where John and Amanda greet them as the subject of Jigsaw's latest game. So that was all the rising action of the movie. One thing I forgot to mention though, a big part of the marketing, similar to how Evil Dead Rise was really pushing the cheese grater stuff, this movie had been really, really like going hard on this eyeball trap with like vacuums on this guy's eyes and they suck his eyeballs out. It's literally the poster for the movie. There's all kinds of like memes and posts about it and stuff. They showed it early at Midsummer Scream this year, I think. So I like, I think everyone went into it thinking it was going to be a bigger thing than it ended up actually being. Um, What it is is earlier in the film after John gets his MRI and like his months to live diagnosis he walks past this patient's room and this like orderly is trying to steal from his drawer like a watch and his wallet and stuff like that and then john imagines him in a trap and it's the eyeball trap and you think maybe it's like a flash forward or whatever but then he puts the stuff back in the drawer and john had just imagined it and stuff which was interesting because then technically like that that is the quote-unquote opening trap but where it didn't actually have any consequences and wasn't, like, real, does it actually count as a trap where it didn't actually happen? So do we not get a trap until after this whole plot beginning thing? Like, is Valentina's trap the first trap of the movie, technically, in a sense? Because that's when the game starts, that's when the real traps happen. Um, These aren't imagined. So it's interesting to look at that way, but I just want, I remembered when reading through the synopsis that the eyeball trap wasn't mentioned, so I wanted to mention it. I thought it was really good. I thought the trap was really good. I mean, obviously gross, and I think eye stuff is definitely something that makes people squirm. So good on them in a sense, I guess, to sort of capitalize on that, because it's one of those things where you don't want to look away, but at the same time, you really want to look away. So back to where we are, the game has begun. Yeah, so Valentina has to sever her leg with a G Lee saw and then extract bone marrow from her femur bone into this funnel thing that will release a key and free herself. So she like cuts her leg off and she gets like the the rod thing in her femur bone and the bone marrow is going through, um, but it doesn't do it in time and she gets decapitated. There's not many traps in the Saw franchise that I squirm thinking about this one in particular the day after I was like just going about my day going about my morning thinking about it and it like it's so weird like I was like cringing at the thought of it not in the embarrassing way but in like the physical way like I could feel like the cringe and just sort of like the uncomfortableness in like the back of my neck and my shoulders and my teeth felt really weird so it's just like oh it's weird how like just imagery can do that to you like 12 hours later or something it's it's really interesting and i think for the quote-unquote first trap of the movie (laughs) the stakes were high and they definitely pulled it off really well so then john and amanda go up to like the little room where they're hiding out not hiding out but observing the trap and stuff in between tests and then Cecilia notices there's like a medical cart in the middle with all their like belongings on it. And so Cecilia's cell phone is in the pocket of her jacket. So she guts Valentina, pulls out her large intestine, and then the three people, so like Cecilia, Diego, and Valentina, you like they toss the large intestine around like a jump rope and then they use it to pull the cart towards Cecilia. And she's able to call someone and say that they're being held and stuff, but then Amanda manages to go down in time, electrocutes her, and takes the phone and wheels the cart out of the way for any of them to get it, and she confiscates the large intestine as well. So go, Amanda. I also feel like this synopsis very much glossed over Amanda's appearance in the movie, and I don't mean her horrible hair. Obviously, when Jigsaw realizes he's gonna do this trap, he can't do it all alone. He's gotta call in reinforcements, so... 
it starts by him picking up the phone and being like, detective, I need you to locate someone for me. And then I'm like, are they really doing Hoffman and Amanda together? Like, am I literally gonna have to see my least favorite apprentice and my favorite apprentice at the same time? Like, it's just gonna be like, I hate Hoffman. I hate him. But anyways, it turns out it's all Amanda helping him. It's just Amanda there with him. It's great. So glad I didn't have to see Hoffman for the majority of the movie. Also, her hair is really bad. I know I said it, but the hair is so bad. I know that they're probably trying to mimic what it would look like freshly cut. Cause obviously it's a little more grown out in like Saw 2 and stuff and even, but then if you look at the flashbacks in Saw 3 to before Saw 1, when Amanda's like capturing Adam and stuff, her hair is a little more grown out. So I think, I think they just sort of missed the ball on Amanda's hair. It's a little, it's a little spocky, um, which just isn't really my thing. I don't think it's a good look on her. She sort of looks like 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 an army cadet. Like with the with the outfit she has on and the haircut, it's 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 giving cadet. So then we find out there's sort of another player in this game, and Parker, who was the patient earlier that John had met in the clinic, av- having him just undergone surgery and like recovered and cancer free and stuff like that. He breaks into the clinic saying that, you know, they scammed him and the money was for his family and his kids and It's all a scam and he wants the money back. And so Amanda restrains him and John is like, you know, if you're able to like watch the game, like I'll give you the money and I'll let you free. So he like ties him to a chair, I think, and lets him just sit to watch out the game. While that is happening, we get the brain surgery chap. So Mateo is forced to drill into his own skull and then remove part of his brain that dissolves. And then I guess the enzyme content of that lowers a scale to get his key. What sucks about Mateo and Valentina's trap is like, if they had an extra minute, they would have survived. Like both, like Valentina's trap, she was so close, but obviously you can't like speed up how fast bone marrow is gonna filter through a great thing. And then Mateo, you can't sort of estimate how fast it takes like his cerebral tissue to dissolve. So they they were so close to both surviving their traps, but Mateo doesn't, Valentina doesn't. And when Mateo, his, when he, he fails his trap, this heated mass closes in and like burns him to death. And then it's time for Gabriella's trap. And we do sort of find out before Diego's trap that, you know, Gabriella was a drug user and I don't know, Amanda sort of sympathized with that as a former drug addict and wanted to help her get out and stuff. And like, she was, she had become involved with this probably just to get money to feed her addiction, which obviously she can't help because it's like a type of illness, really. So, you know, Amanda lets Mateo do his trap first and then it's time for Gabriella's trap. So she is suspended in the air from one wrist and one ankle while this huge radiation light is pointed at her and she has to use a sledgehammer to break her limbs free, basically. So she's to break her wrist and her ankle. Cecilia gets her to break her ankle first, I think. So she swings out of the way of the radiation light and we think she's home free and then the light turns and then she has to break her wrist and then she falls down, she survives. And then John tells Amanda to take her to a hospital. But before she can, it turns out that Parker escaped and got a gun and forces them at gunpoint to free Cecilia. And they've been in it together the whole time. They're a couple. They have them kiss a lot, which is really weird and just feels very like goofy villain. Like we were in this together the whole time. And then they make out and it's, it's weird. It's like, no, stop that. But anyways, they're in on the trap together. You know, John and Amanda are pleading for them to let like them get Gabriella to a hospital because she survived her trap. You know, she's worthy of like continuing her life since she like survived and obviously is gonna have a different outlook on things and won't do that again. But they don't let her and Cecilia stomps on her neck and she dies and Amanda screams. Oh my God, the screaming that Shawnee Smith does in this scene sent fucking shivers down my spine. Homegirl was acting, rent was due, and she had to pay it. Oh my god, it was, like, she's done some 
really good acting in like Saw 1, 2, and 3 and then the flashbacks and the rest. But I feel like this scene right here is like such like not even a step up but just like girl why why weren't you screaming like that more like this is a ama like amazing in like the sense that it's like so guttural and like raw and stuff and like damn oh my god I, I just had to mention that and then Cecilia forces John into the trap that she was in but her trap is meant for two people so she needs a second person to do the trap with her uh, she gets Amanda to chain herself to another wall and then here's the kid from earlier in the movie, Carlos, playing soccer and kicking the ball against the building. She obviously knew that John had built like a friendship with him and then goes outside and tricks him into coming in and puts him in the trap. So this is the first time we have like, like I know Daniel was technically in a trap in the nerve gas house and stuff, but this is, he was sort of more like a pawn and he, I don't think he himself was being tested, but I guess you could say he was being tested because he was shoplifting and stuff. Um, and I don't, I don't know. We never see him again. So it's not like we get to know if he has a different outlook on life. But anyways, I think this is the first time we see a kid in a trap where they could actually die. Once again, you could argue that Zepp was going to kill Diana and Allison if Gordon didn't kill Adam. But that's, it's, this kid is put more at risk than any other kid in the franchise, I would say. For a quicker, more painful death. Not even quicker, because it's like waterboarding, essentially. I, I can't get my point across. Anyways, it's like, a, it's like a seesaw trap, so there's a lever on either side of them, so if John wants to take all the blood, he has his lever pulled. If Carlos wants to have the blood pour on his face, he pulls the lever. It's like a seesaw thing. So as they're going up, John is telling him, like, don't pull, don't pull in Spanish. As we remember earlier, Carlos taught John how to say pull in Spanish. So John is saying, like, no hava, no hava. And then, you know, they get they get waterboarded with blood. John does the majority of it, and then Carlos does enough of it for John to, like, get his bearings, and then he takes the rest. While that's all happening, Parker and Cecilia have gone up to, like, the watchtower room to get their stolen cash, but when they take the bag off the shelf, it activates a tripwire. When the tri tripwire gets activated, the blood trap stops. So it was all planned. And then the door to the watchtower gets slammed, and they're trapped in there. There's gas coming in that is filling the room and making Cecilia and Parker look rough and, like, blistery and coughing and stuff. It turns out that the, the shackles that John and Amanda had on were able to be unlocked without a key. They just had to, like, move a little lever thing and push it down. So they all got out. John sort of breaks down that Diego had given up Parker as one of the scammers and stuff. And, like, he knew it was going to play out like this. And that's why the room was trapped. And, you know, all along it was going to be John on the blood trap with someone else. Probably was supposed to be Amanda. Cecilia getting her phone and calling Parker was all planned and stuff. So then Cecilia and Parker's trap is that the, you know, the gas is filling the room. And there's only one sort of, like, head-sized hole to stick their head out of to get, like, fresh air or whatever so that they live. And then Cecilia kills Parker. And we're never really shown if she lives or dies. I mean, she's just there with her head sticking out of the wall. John and Amanda and Carlos leave. By the way, all that money that Parker was looking for, John gave to Carlos, obviously to help his family and stuff, because I don't think they had a lot of money or whatever, so nice of him to do that. And then, in a very interesting way to end a Saw movie, John and Carlos and Amanda walk away into the sunrise, into this beautiful white light in Mexico, which is a very interesting way to end a Saw movie, because if you think of it, Usually they don't end that nicely like the original saw ends with just Adam screaming in the bathroom that he's trapped in forever You know saw six is Hoffman with the bear trap on Left in alone in a room to die and then saw seven ends with Hoffman left alone in the bathroom to die Which I'm really glad they didn't give any clarification on because I would like to imagine he died in there But anyways, so yeah, they walk they walk into the sunrise and then, you know, credits roll for a bit. And then we get a post-credit scene. 
in the bathroom. And you can kind of, you can, if you look hard enough, you can see Adam's corpse in the corner of the room. The guy from earlier, Henry Kessler, who claims to have been cured from the treatment that Cecilia gave him and tells John to pursue it and stuff. Turns out, I mean, that was fake too, so he didn't actually have a scar or anything like he showed John earlier. And he's hanging from the ceiling with this trap called, like, the belly scratcher or whatever. I think it's gonna, like, probably scratch away at his stomach or whatever. I don't really know how he's supposed to escape because he's fully awake while it's happening and John and Hoffman are also in the bathroom with him. So maybe, maybe they're being bad and they're just not letting, not giving him any chance to live. Maybe they're just like, fuck you, you lied and now your stomach's gonna get slashed to death. It will be interesting to see what they do with that because then, like, a lot of the time they leave bodies in that bathroom. But as we know in Saw 2, there's no bodies hanging from the ceiling. So there's also, there's, there's got to be some kind of story of them, either Henry surviving the trap and getting down and out, and that's why he's not there in Saw 2, or they take his body down and then they clean the floor where he was, because I'm sure there's going to be a lot of blood. So very interesting to see what they do there. I wouldn't be surprised if the sequel to this is either between Saw X and Saw 2, or between Saw 2 and Saw 3. Interested to see. Well, I guess Saw 3 and 4 take place at the same time, so you could do something there. But anyways, that was Saw X. This is probably my fifth favorite. I think they kind of go in order of release, like 1, 2, 3, 4, X, and then five and six and seven. Seven's definitely my least favorite. And then I still haven't seen Jigsaw or Spiral, sort of where they're not mainline ones. And I don't think they're ever going to do anything with anything from Jigsaw because sort of a weird, a weird one. But anyways, yeah, I, I enjoyed Saw X. It was fun to see. I'd love to see it again and maybe properly compose some thoughts in a more artistic way than just rambling off the cuff like I am right now. But yeah, overall, I'm very happy with this movie. The marketing leading up to it was genius with like the strikes going on in the entertainment world, not being able to use like Tobin Bell or Shawnee Smith to do press interviews. Them using fucking Billy the Puppet for everything was genius and hilarious. And I wanna do a whole video talking about that because it was so great. And there's such funny stuff that I don't think everyone got to see. But yeah, I think I'm gonna leave this episode of Reviews from Hell off here. Um, so thank you so much for watching. Let me know what you thought of Saw X down in the comments. Make sure to like, share, and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.